Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today for Fun with Fossils. My name is Dawn Perez, and I'm one of the education specialists at the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County in West Palm Beach, Florida. Today, we're going to be discussing our fossil collection. But before we get into that, let's discuss a little bit about the Solid Waste Authority. So the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County is a local government agency that was created in 1975 to manage all of Palm Beach County's waste. That would include your garbage, recycling, home chemicals, and biosolids, or your number two. Now we have a lot of efficient and unique ways to manage that waste, and we need to because we're a very large county. We are the largest area-wise in Florida, and we're the third largest population-wise. In Palm Beach County, we have about 1.4 million people that live here. And each one of us on average makes about 12 pounds of solid waste per day. So if you do that math and you take the 1.4 million people and multiply it by 12 pounds, at the Solid Waste Authority of Palm Beach County, we get almost 17 million pounds of solid waste per day. 17 million pounds. For you guys to think about that, that would be a football field piled up to 27 feet high which is almost as high as the goalposts. The goalposts are actually 30 feet. So again, we have a lot of different ways to manage that. Um, we're very unique. Uh, but again, today what we're gonna be discussing is our fossil collection. So let's get started with our fun with fossils. So before we take a look at our fossils, we need to talk about our landfill because our landfills are the reason behind why and how we have our fossils. Our landfills are called sanitary landfills or clean landfills. And this diagram shows you why. Notice that before we put anything in the landfill, we first put down two really thick liners of plastic. They're about the thickness of a laundry detergent bottle. And we heat seal those and we test those for pressure. After we put those liners down, we then uh, install our leachate collection system. Now this is a system which, which collects something called leachate, which is a fancy word for garbage juice. And we don't want that garbage juice going down, down into the earth and into our groundwater because that's where we get our drinking water. So in order to protect the environment and our groundwater, we put down these two thick liners and a leachate collection system. Then what we do is we put a protective layer of soil down, which is typically a type of clay. And then we start to build our landfill. So then we're gonna put in the ashes or the garbage that can't be burned, followed by a six inch daily cover of soil. And we're gonna alternate those layers. Think of it as us almost making a garbage lasagna. We're building our landfill in layers like a lasagna. And then once that landfill gets up to about 160 feet above sea level, we're gonna cap it off with a final, final layer of that plastic liner. We're gonna heat seal it so nothing comes in and out. And we're gonna grow grass on it. And then eventually we're gonna give it back to the community. We actually turn old landfills into golf courses and parks. Now this next graphic is going to show you a real life example of our landfill. So this is one of our landfills. You see the gray here are the ashes being laid down. And then the brown here is that daily cover, that daily soil that we put down. Um, and we do this so that the ashes don't blow away, okay? We actually use machines to compact uh, the soil and the ashes as well to make sure that that is not getting into the air and blowing away. So what does this have to do with our fossils? Well, we had to get the soil from somewhere, right? Before I answer that question, I just wanted to show this um, tribute to the people that actually collected these fossils. Okay, so these are the people that collected these fossils. Um, they're former SWA employees and they also identified them. So we wanna give a special thanks to these people for our fossil collection. But to answer your question, what does the landfill and this cover soil have to do with the fossils? Well, 
Back in the 1980s, we started a dredging project because we needed fill or that soil for the landfills and we didn't want to pay for it. So what we ended up doing was using the machinery I'm going to show you here to dig up that soil for the landfill. And in the process, we found these fossils. So here's the equipment that was used to do that. The fossils were only found about 30 to 40 feet deep, so they weren't very deep. And if you go along our footprint, drive along um, someday, you'll notice that we do have some lakes on our property. Those lakes are actually not natural, they're man-made, and that's from this dredging project. So once again, the fossils were collected. They were classified by that group of former SWA staff that was on that list I showed you. And then we put them in fossil cases. So let's check out our fossils. This is fossil case number one, the first one we have. And you'll notice that these are marine fossils, or fossils that come from the ocean. So I like to point out we have two different kinds of oysters in here. We have scallops over here. We have huge clams. All of these are considered bivalves, which means they have two shells, right? Bi means two, like bicycle has two wheels. Bivalve means two shells. We also have some really cool um, sand dollar fossils. We have some olive snail shells, which I love here. Down below, we have our um, Florida state shell, which is the Florida fighting conch. So we have some really big fighting conchs down here. Uh, now, snails are univalves, which means they have one shell, right? Uni means one. So we have our Florida fighting conchs. We have some barnacles down here as well, as you can see. We have some really awesome coral skeleton fossils. And then in the corner, we have um, some really big whelk snail shells. So that is some of our marine fossils. As we move on to fossil case number two, you'll see even more marine fossils. So here we have some shark's teeth and vertebra or backbone. Below it, we have porpoise vertebra or backbone. And next to that, we have manatee skeleton ribs and things like that. Now, one thing I wanted to point out over here on the right hand side, you'll notice that we have mangroves. Did you know that mangrove roots can actually be fossilized? So what you're looking at here is actually fossilized prop roots. The sediment fossilized around those prop roots um, and preserve them, which is really cool. My favorite fossils in this whole display is down here. So a lot of the times when I ask people what they think this is from, they think maybe it's rocks or maybe it's coral. As you can see, it is a little porous. It does have some holes in it. But these are actually fossils that come from a very large animal. Can you guess? They're actually big pieces of whale vertebra or backbone. And you'll notice that there's different colors, right? There's dark vertebra and there's light. And the reason that they're different colors, it just means that they were preserved in different types of sediment. All right, so let's move on to fossil case number three. So here in this case, we start to see terrestrial or land animals. So notice we have alligator um, vertebra and fossils and bones. And then coming up on the right hand side is my favorite collection and the whole fossil collection. So some of you might be fans of the Ice Age movies. I know I am. I love those animated Ice Age movies. We actually have the cast of the Ice Age, believe it or not. We have mammoth fossils. So we have Manny over here, the mammoth. We have fossils from a scimitar cat. 
which is related to a saber-toothed tiger like Diego from the Ice Age movies. And later, I'll show you the ground sloth fossils we have as well. Now, another Ice Age period fossil we have over here is Mastodon. And this one's really cool because that's actually a fossilized tusk that we're going to see from the Mastodon. So there's that tusk. How cool is that? And then down below, we have Sid the ground sloth. So yes, there actually were sloths in the Ice Age. They were called ground sloths, so they're actually huge. I mean, really big. Um, and so we do have the cast of the Ice Age, like I like to say. And then above that, on the middle shelf, you'll notice some bones, some fossils here. And if you look closely, you can actually see predator teeth marks. So these animals were being hunted and were fossilized during that time. Um, which is really cool. So you can actually see teeth marks in these fossils. And another one of my favorite fossils because I love turtles. We have turtle fossils, including their scoots. So turtles have a shell, right? It's called a carapace. And on the carapace, it has those different patterns. Those are scoots. So we actually have fossilized scoots of the turtle. All right, so now we're going to move on to fossil case number four. And notice more terrestrial animals. We have bison. We have camels. Oh my gosh, camels? What else do we have? Let's see. We've got horse fossils. Next to that, we have deer fossils. Up here, we have a really cool fossil. This is actually a, a fossil from a tapir, or a taper, however you want to say it. I like to say tapir. Okay. That was deer. We have some armadillo in the top right. And then the middle shelf is one of my favorite fossils on this shelf, and it's called corporalite. So take a look at it. What do you think this is? We'll come back to it. You'll notice on the bottom we also have boar or pig fossils. All right, so taking a look at that, corporalite is actually fossilized Dung. That's right, number two. So yes, scat or number two can be fossilized. So before we move on, um, in this case, fossil case number five, we're going to have different fossilized minerals and sediment that we dug up as well. So you'll notice on the top shelf we have some calcite crystals. On the bottom you'll notice that we have Fossilized wood. So yes, wood can also be fossilized. So we have some fossilized pine tree and other types of bark and wood. And then next to that we have coquina, which um, back in the day a lot of the roads were made out of coquina. There's a lot of coquina in Florida. There's also a lot of limestone, which you see next to the coquina. And there's some more calcite crystals. They're really pretty and shiny. And then below we have sandstone, and we also have a fossilized clay ball. So that's our fossilized minerals and sediments. Before we move on, can anyone guess how we have all of these fossils, how we found them all in one spot? Remember that we have marine or sea fossils, and we also have terrestrial or land fossils. So how did we have them all in one place? Why did we find them here? Well, remember that Florida was not always above sea level. There were times in history when Florida was below sea level. When you look here, you'll notice that during our last interglacial period, you can see some of Florida, including West Palm Beach, uh, was under the water, it was below sea level. And so this is the reason why we have some of the fossils that we do at the Solid Waste Authority. We believe that where the Solid Waste Authority is used to be an estuary, which is a body of water between land and the sea. 
And so this area would be mixed with fresh water and salt water, which would uh, be called brackish water. And that's why we'd have our terrestrial or land animals and our marine life or our sea life all together in one spot. Okay, so that's one of the reasons that we have all of our fossils. Now think back to the fossil cases though. Remember I pointed out camel fossils? How do you guys think those got there? Because have we ever had camels in the United States? I don't think so. So how could camels have gotten over here? And how could we have found fossilized camel bones? Well, think back to when the continents were all together and they formed one large continent, which you see here. Does anybody remember the name of this continent? The name of this continent is Pangaea, okay? So once upon a time, all of the continents were together. They formed one super continent, Pangaea. And then as time went on, they broke apart into the seven different continents that we have today. So that is another reason why we have some of the fossils that we do. Hi, welcome back. So I hope you really enjoyed our Fun with Fossils presentation today and learning about our fossil display on the third floor of our education center that you can see here. I really encourage you once we're open again to come out and check out our fossil display as well as our other facilities. So if you have any questions or comments about our presentation today, please leave them below and we'll get to them. Or you can email us at education at swa.org. Before you go, I'd also like to remind you that we're bringing you programs daily, every weekday like this, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. So if you've missed some of our recordings or you want to see our upcoming schedule, please go to swa.org backslash education. All right. Thanks for tuning in again and have a great day. Bye.